Hello everyone, Dawn here, and yes, I'm back with another Halloween card. But this time, instead of using pattern paper, I decided to make my own background with some stencils that I'm going to make myself from some tree dyes, which I think is kind of fun. I love it when I can use products for different things than they're intended for. I'm going to be using the Whimsy Stamps Elvira Moonlighting Die Set the mini slimline tree house and then i'm gonna make the stencils from the tree assortment dies so let's get started the first thing i did was cut a piece of gray cardstock to four and three quarter by six and three quarter to make my background and i cut a white circle that's about two and a half inches round for my moon you can use any circle die that you have I ink blend the moon very quickly with some Distress Oxide Fossilized Amber. I don't really go dark on the yellow for the moon and I don't color it in completely either. I left some white spots and I made the yellow kind of patchy looking. I bring in my Distress Oxide Black Soot because of course you need that to have a spooky moon, right? Otherwise it just won't look spooky. I start by just putting a little bit around the edge and I rub a lot of it off on the scrap paper because I don't want to put too much on it. I just want the edges to get a little bit dark. I actually should have finished it right here, but then I kept on adding the black ink for some reason and then I felt like I just added too much. The good thing about Distress Oxide inks is that you can just keep adding more ink and the color will change with the last color that you use. So I just bring in a little bit of the fossilized amber and I rub it right in the middle of the moon and not around the edges, just in the middle to take away some of the black. And now I think it looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the background. I usually start with white paper, but today I thought I would start with some gray paper. This paper is called Fog. It's not a dark gray, so it's kind of nice. It actually is kind of very light, but by using the light gray, I won't have to do as much ink blending as I would with the white cardstock. I'm actually going to change up my background a little bit. I usually go for like a, a red or blue type background for Halloween, but today I'm going to go more purpley, like a purpley black background. I'm using the Distress Oxide Dusty Concord, and I'm going to go all around the edges with it. You can go as light or as dark as you want with this. Then I'm going to bring in some Distress Oxide Hickory Smoke. I'm using this to add some layers to my colors, so I'm not just going from purple to black. I want to add some of the gray to the middle of the card so it looks like it's ink blended as well and not just some plain card stock. So what I do is I just go around all the edges with it and then I just bring a little bit in the middle and I don't put any extra on my blending brush because I don't want the middle to be too dark. And to finish off the ink blending, of course, I need to add some Distress Oxide Black Soot. It's a must have for any Halloween background. I just go around all the edges with it until they're all covered. I do put a lot on it because it does lighten up after a while. So if you want it to be darker, you need to put a good amount on it. I do put a little bit in the middle, but I always start at the outer edge and work my way in until the ink is almost gone on the brush. Okay, now that my ink blending is done, let's get to making some stencils. This is fun to do, and I might actually start doing this more often. The first thing to do is cut the dies out that you want to use. I used white scrap cardstock I had. You could use acetate if you want to so you can see where you're stenciling on your card. I was fine with just using regular cardstock because it really didn't matter where my trees were going. They didn't need to be in a specific spot on my card. So I'm fine with just using the cardstock, but you might want the acetate if you need to stencil in a precise spot. 
on your card. Now, keep in mind to leave enough of a border so when you're ink blending, you have room on the stencil to move the brush around so you don't get ink on your background. I decided to turn these crooked on the cardstock and it worked out perfectly for me. To ink blend the trees, I put the stencil where I want it to go on my ink blended background. I'm using the black soot again and I'm going to rub some of the ink off on the scrap piece of paper and then I rub all inside the cutout of the tree. Now keep in mind the black ink will also lighten up over time. I keep moving the stencil to the next spot and I repeat the process making sure to stay on the stencil and not get any ink on the background and look how nice it's coming out so far. I swap out between the bigger and the smaller trees and just kind of keep filling in between trees. I'm going to keep doing this until all of my trees are done that I want. I decided to go with these stenciled trees instead of die cutting them because the die cuts just kind of overpowered my card and it didn't look good. It looked like my house was laying on top of some trees rather than the trees being behind the house. So by stenciling the trees, it kind of gives the illusion that the trees are behind the house. I decided to glue my moon down so I can stencil some trees on top of the moon. I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous to do this. I wasn't sure how it would look and if I would like it, but I was happy with the way it turned out. It does look like the moon is behind the tree and that was the look that I was going for. Okay, now that my trees are done, I want to show you a little trick to hiding the bottom of the trees. I chose to put more black ink around the whole card, but I focused mostly on the bottom of the card. And as you could see, the bottoms of the trees disappeared, and it looks natural now, and not just like there's trees on the card. It almost looks like a fog rolled in and is hiding the bottom of the trees. Okay, let's put this card together. I cut out some yellow cardstock to put behind the tree house, the little bird house, and the lantern so it looks like there's lights on in the house. I'm making a 5x7 card so I cut a piece of white cardstock to 10x7 and I scored it at 5 inches. Then I cut a piece of black cardstock to 4 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths to make a black border. I also die cut another tree house from the black cardstock that I'm using for the border because no one will ever see it and it helps to save on paper. And I'll just save it for another project. And then I adhere the black cardstock to the back of the ink blended background. I adhere the card front to the card base. And then I put foam tape all on the back of the tree house and I adhered it to the card front. Using foam tape really helps give the illusion that the trees are really behind the house. I put foam tape on the back of Elvira and I adhere her to the card front. And a little trick I did was cover the hole where her face goes with foam tape as well. And you'll see how easy it is to adhere her face. I color the face with E00 Cotton Pearl and look how nice her face slides right in. Then I insert her eyes and I use a Sharpie to add her little eyeballs and some eyelashes. And to finish off Elvira, I just use my white jelly roll pen and I put streaks in her hair and a little bit going down her dress just to give it a little accent. I adhere the bat so he looks like he's flying in front of the moon. I heat emboss the sentiment Happy Halloween from the Hocus Pocus Kitten stamp set and I put foam tape on the back of it and stuck it on the treehouse. At this point I thought the card was done but then I saw a smudge spot on the moon that was kind of bothering me and I said to myself, what can I do to cover it up? So of course I turned to my all-time favorite Halloween dyes, my little ghosts from the Boo dye, and they worked out perfect. I just randomly adhered them to the card and I put one over the smudge spot and now you can't see it. 
And that's going to complete my card for today. I think this card came out super cute and it was not hard at all to make. I want to thank you for joining me on the Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the card. Be sure to subscribe to the Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel and their other social media platforms so you don't miss out on any upcoming releases and great inspirational videos. Also, check out their website for all their new releases. And as always, thanks for spending your time with me and have yourself a wonderful day.